My name's Chaz Bruns, and I travel the world in search of the cheapest food, hostels, transportation, and tours so you don't have to. Which means you're going to get to find out some of the best places in the world to eat, some of the best people in the world to meet, Howdy, partner. and where to go to have a damn good time. And the best part is, I'm going to show you how to do it all dirt cheap. So we're flying in from Berlin to Athens, Greece, and I am psyched. Athens has been on my bucket list for quite some time. The population in the city is 665,000 people. Athens is considered the home to the first known democracy, and as the birthplace of modern theater, there are over 148 stages throughout the city. You're going to want to take the train from the airport into the old city. We pay 22 bucks to get a three-day pass. But you may want to pay as you go, because we found we didn't really use the train much after we got into the old city. We got an Airbnb right in town for $26.50 to a person per night. And we each got our own private room. I thoroughly enjoyed the new residence and decided to have a nice glass of cold beer in the king's chair. Because, why not? We got in kind of late, but luckily for us, there was a Thai place still open a few blocks from our Airbnb. $2 beer. I like grease already. I got the pot CU for $8.29. So guess what's only one block from our Airbnb? The Acropolis. It's not open at night, but it's free to walk around the perimeter. The hill next to it has some great views. This is the night view of the Acropolis. It is one block from our Airbnb. It doesn't get much better than this. We found an ancient tomb just chilling on the hillside. No big deal. Athens is full of stuff like this. Lots of ancient history. We thought we might be able to sneak into the Acropolis, but it's against the law to go in at night. And there's armed guards. Guard dog. <laughs> I guess they weren't lying about the guard dogs. We were lucky enough to get this far. The guard let us slip under a rope, but we gotta leave in five minutes and we can't go past the gates. It's still pretty awesome. If I wouldn't have to spend the night in a Greek prison, I'd probably do it. Gotta follow the rules, kids. Next door to our Airbnb is a grocery store. I got some fruit and Greek yogurt, because I'm in Greece. Cost $2.50. Good morning. Ate it from my balcony. Life is good. Today we're headed to explore the Acropolis. It still looks pretty much the same as it did here a few thousand years ago. They've still got local vendors, cobblestone roads, and street performers. Felt like I was right back in ancient Greece. We got the multi-site entry pass for $32.81. The monuments on the Acropolis have survived for thousands of years. Through small fights and squabbles with local leaders, to massive wars with huge explosions and bombardments. It's been through fires, earthquakes, and erosion. It's been altered, remodeled, and redesigned by different rulers, religious leaders, cults, and political groups. It's impressive they're still standing. The wind, rain, and sun also doesn't help. But the local government is doing its best to preserve it. So hopefully it'll be here for a few thousand more years. The Greeks built the Parthenon in honor of their goddess Athena. Athena was venerated as the goddess of the city, the goddess of war, the goddess of victory, and the goddess of crafts. As far as any ancient citizens were concerned, Athena ran this city. And since only about one third of the population could read the ancient religious texts, there was really no way for the peasants and common man to refute the claims. More or less, Athena was real, and you better worship her. Or else. Somewhat similar to modern day religions. For lunch, we wanted some authentic Greek food overlooking the Acropolis. So, we did just that. The waitress suggested I get this traditional kebab. Delish. Hungry birdie. 
So we totally forgot about the backside of the Acropolis. But luckily for us, the staff was feeling nice that day and let us re-enter. But be forewarned, your ticket is good only once. If you leave an exhibit, they won't let you back in. And there's a lot of stuff to see, so take your time. The Theater of Dionysus is considered by most to be the first theater in the world and is the birthplace of Greek drama. I felt incredibly honored to even step foot in it. The next exhibit on our list was the Temple of Olympian Zeus, one of the most massive temples ever constructed. I know it's all in my head, but I swear I could feel the presence of the ancient gods. And even if they really were once here, all that remains of their empire now is some rubble and dust. Because as they say, nothing lasts forever. Time to go check out the shops and restaurants. We're walking over from the Temple of Olympian Zeus to the Plaka Steps. It's a beautiful stroll through the National Garden. It's a little bit touristy here, but that means they've got $10 plastic helmets, if you're into that sort of thing. What is going on there? When we got to the famous Plaka neighborhood, we went straight to the top. Wanted to get the best view we could find. Three bucks for an espresso fredo and this view. Now we're headed over to the Roman Agora, included in your multipass. The Roman Agora, also known as the Market of Caesar and Augustus, is located on the north side of the Acropolis. An inscription on the monumental gate of Athena tells us that Julius Caesar and Augustus were the ones who provided the funds for its construction in the first century BC. It contains the Tower of Winds which was designed by an ancient astronomer to be an elaborate water clock on the inside and sundial and weather vane on the outside. Hadrian's library is also included in your multipass. It's fallen into disrepair, so they've reconstructed some pieces to their former glory. Kinda neat to see how it once looked. It was constructed by Emperor Hadrian in 132 AD. The library once contained ancient books of papyrus. Adjoining halls were used as reading rooms and the corners served as lecture halls. There was once an inner court surrounded by columns and a decorative oblong pool. But the pool has long since dried up. Now we're headed to the ancient Agora, which is also included in your multipass. For over 5,000 years, the Agora was used as a commercial, assembly, and residential area. It's an olive tree! These days it pretty much seems like a nice public park, but in its prime it was a magnificent and beautiful open-air market. It also contains the Temple of Hephaestus, the patron god of metalworking, craftsmanship, and fire. And I'd say the craftsmanship on this one paid off. 80% of it is still standing in roughly the same condition it was on the day it was built. Our last stop for the day was an ancient cemetery, also included in your multipass. It was originally the potter's quarter of the city, from which the English word ceramic is derived. But eventually, it became known as a cemetery. It's quite a beautiful place for a sunset walk. For dinner, we went to Suvlaki Bar and I got a pork kebab for $1.75. Pretty much a Greek hot dog. I approve. So if you watch my show, you know I splurge once an episode. So today we're going with Athens Day Cruise out to the islands. 
For 125 bucks, they'll pick you up at your hotel and they'll cruise you out to Hydra, Poros, and Egina. You can sit inside, but I personally think outside's the way to go. And it's a big boat, so you got lots of room to walk around. What an awesome way to see the Saronic Gulf. I can almost picture the ancient Greeks fishing in their tiny wooden boats, but I'm good staying in this big metal one. And just like that, we reached our first stop, Hydra Island. If you're coming to Athens, you really do need to come check out the islands. Hydra is probably my personal favorite. A tiny fishing village with barely any machinery. No cars on this island, only donkeys. They're world famous here for their almond candy, so we're gonna go find some. We heard there's free samples at Hydra's Almonds. This is traditional Greek almond candy, and this is the oldest almond store on the island. Delish. The almond candy was delicious, but it didn't satisfy my sweet tooth. So it's a good thing our server Chris told us about the vanilla gelato. Visit your myth in Hydra, visit us. Oh, Jira wants it, but he can't have it. <laughs> and now we reboard the boat and head to our second destination, Poros Island. We're going up to the clock tower. The clock tower was built back in 1927 and since then has become the number one tourist spot on the island. At least for photographers looking for a sweet view. After Poros Island, you get a free, unlimited buffet back on the boat. I tried to explain to the lady next to me that we were filming a travel show, but she didn't really speak English, so I think she just thought we were weird. And I guess I kind of am. Our last stop was the island of Aegina. It has temples, swimming, beaches, sailing, walking, cycling, whining, and dining. Oh, and of course, there's shopping. For instance, fresh seafood like this little guy got at the fish market. Yum, just caught this morning. Although the octopus looked deliciously fresh, I was in the mood for some pistachios. Some free ones to be exact. They're known for their pistachios. Wow. Free sample pistachio butter. Oh my god. <laughs> this is great. Chocolate pistachio butter. I'm starting to think that pistachio goes good with anything. Welcome to Pistachio Island. We're waiting for you guys to try pistachio and a lot of beautiful things made from pistachio. I'll be waiting for you. Time to try what many say is the best pistachio ice cream on the planet. I don't know, I'm skeptical. The best in the world? Let's see. That is hands down the most velvety, buttery, unique pistachio flavor I've ever tried in my life. I'm not making this up. Grease, I give it to you. 
number one best pistachio ice cream on the planet. Good job. The cruise was coming to an end, so we boarded one last time to head back to Athens. But don't worry, it's not over yet. There's still live music and traditional Greek dancing. And that, my friends, concludes the cruise. Now we're headed back into Athens to have some dinner. Calamari, fresh from the sea, my friends. Hungry kitty. Welp, folks, that's a wrap on Greece. And as always, remember that you can do this too. Wiggle it. I've never wiggled my paw. <laughs> Please don't put that in bloopers. The new emperor of Greece. Only in name, he doesn't really have much power, but still a nice position to have. Приезжайте в Афины. Привет из России. So go to Athens. Say hi from Russia with love. That's good. Wrapped up in fur and shoes of alligators